CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18 Weekender. I'm Shruti Mishra. My guest today is an actor, producer, dancer, model, VJ, TV presenter and has turned an entrepreneur as well. She's truly essayed every role with grace and elan. I'm talking about none other than Malaika Arora Khan. We are at the Label Life's office in Mumbai. Let's go inside and meet her. Malaika, thank you so much for joining us on CNBC TV 18 Weekender. You're one of the many talented people who've made it in the showbiz on your own. You had no connections whatsoever. How was life growing up? I know that you were independent since a very early age. In fact, you took care of your sister Amrita. I wouldn't say I took care of her, but yeah. I guess that, that came out of, uh, out of a necessity because uh, uh, my mom was, was working, so yeah. I guess... Uh, like they, they call us uh, latchkey kids. That's what it is. Yeah. You know, your parents are working, and you know you have no choice but to, but to then you know come home and fend for yourself and, and all of that. Not that I, I think that's what probably made me the person that I am today. And I feel I, I can take on any situation. I think I, I am very independent, so to speak. Mm -hmm. How was life growing up? Was it tough? Was it like a normal, uh, I think you were staying in suburban Thane, right? I was uh, born in, and brought up, I yeah. schooled in, in Thane and I then moved later to uh, to Chambur and finished my, my final schooling over there. But I would, I mean, it, uh, like you said, a typical middle class uh, family with yeah. uh, working parents and, uh, uh, you know, as you say, I mean, every day is, is a bit of a struggle, but uh, Never did our par my parents ever make us feel. I mean, I would say my mom. I think she's the one who's been the driving force behind behind hmm. us and constantly looking over us and taking care of us. And we believe you were a complete tomboy when you were growing up, right? And can you share with us some incidents, some anecdotes uh, from your childhood? I was nothing like this, <laughs> like you see over here, yeah. all prim and, and poised over here. I was nothing like this as a kid. I was yeah. a complete, uh, uh, you know, a paradox of what I am today so yes extremely tomboyish would would fight with all the boys would you know would would uh, beat them up if they if they said anything you know mm. God forbid if they said anything to me or my sister that that was the end so yeah and I liked it because I felt that was my way of it was my shield it was my way of protecting myself from from the rest of the world so I guess that's probably why I felt that I needed to be uh, a little tomboyish and my dad used to always say that uh, uh, she's because I, I am the first born, so she used to always make me feel like you know, ladka hai ghar ka. So yeah, that's boy, probably yeah. where it, it came from. So you started your dance training very early. You were, I think, four years old. You learned ballet and Bharatanatyam. Uh, you were great in sports as well. My two passions uh, in my growing up years was dance and sport, hmm. and I actively pursued it as long as I as I could. And then I'm glad my mom pushed me to do it. It wasn't it wasn't easy, but I still remember we used to stay in Thane, and I, I was learning ballet with the was a really amazing, uh, you know, ballet teacher, and she used to take me all the way from Thane to town, which is Kolaba, yeah. and it wasn't easy. I can, and she yeah. do that thrice a week. She was a working, you know, mom, and for her to finish work, pick me up, take me to to class. So I, I have to say, but she somehow she was like, you know, we got to do it because you love it, you enjoy it, and we can see that, you know, uh, spark in you. So the sport was something that I, that uh, I, I, I think that was my my release. You know, I could. When I would run, when I was on the field over yeah. there, it would just, I forgot the rest of the world. It would just be me and that and that field and that time of, you know, running space over there. It would just make, liberate me completely and I loved it. Tell me, how did that first modeling assignment happen? Was it by chance? Was it something that intrigued you from the very beginning? They were looking for a society cover girl and Suresh Natarajan was doing this whole feature and he met me at, at a shoot and shot a couple of pictures and then we did a whole feature and they launched me as the as a cover face for you know for and society I believe that face. was by chance right you were not auditioning it or no my sister was shooting for an ad yeah. actually she was doing some ad at, uh, and shooting with Suresh Natarajan and uh, I went by there to to pick her up or you know just to see how things were going yeah. and that's and then he said you know 
oh, let me click a few pictures of yours. And I was like, okay, cool, no problem. <laughs> and he clicked a few pictures and he showed it to the editor then. And, and like they say, the rest is history. Yes, and you catapulted into fame quite literally with your item number, uh, Chaya Chaya. And uh, from there on, there's been no looking back. And you've often said that you enjoy dancing more than acting. Why is that so? <laughs> it was just an easy way out, maybe? No. Uh, I've always loved dancing. Dancing yeah. is my passion. Dancing is something I've done forever. Never enjoyed the the acting part of it. it but just you never were in this attracted business, me. Yeah. But it just never, you know, like how every time you talk to somebody who who's in the business, who's acting, yeah. you can see they live, breathe, eat, yes. sleep acting. I never felt like that. It just didn't. It didn't motivate me. It mm. didn't excite me. Yeah. It didn't none of the above. So, uh, you know, and somehow I just found it a little too. Uh, not my cup of tea. Well, I can actors life is mired with controversies, people write negative things and reviews about you and also often get into your personal space. How do you react to this? I'm thick skinned so. Well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it, it bothers me. Sometimes it, uh, it uh, gets to me. I'm not really somebody who sits and clarifies. You'll never really ever hear me clarifying things or, yeah. or maybe that probably why my silence is probably taken for, for granted. But. I guess with time you just kind of learn to deal with things, you just kind of, like I said, you become thick skinned, you kind of overlook a lot of it, you you know, hear from here and it's, and it's out there. Alright, on that note, it's time for us to take a short break. When we return, we ask Malaika about living the label life. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. CNBC TV 18 Weekender. 